Okay, we are recording. Yeah? All right. All right, we're starting. My name is Andy, and I'm here to say we're talking garbage collectors in a really great way. Anyway, this is my talk about uh, Whip It, which is a new garbage collector for Guile. So Guile is an imitation of Scheme, as most people know. Um, but if you looked at it and, like, you know, you tried to determine its composition, you would notice that it, there's a big C library that's, that's part of it. And it has an API, uh, like we show, like there is a const function, which is defined as, like, const, and it takes some arguments, and it, and it returns a value. And there are, there's a lot of code inside Guile that uses this API and a lot of code in external projects and, and files that, that also use this API. So it's exposed to, uh, it's exposed to third party users. Um, and Guile is a garbage collected language. Uh, data is allocated by the garbage collector and the garbage collector takes responsibility for freeing it. And how is this, how is this going to work? So let's say I const a value, I'm making a new object I need to include it in the set of live data, right? So what's a live object? A live object is uh, one of the roots or anything referred to by a live object. So it's a circular definition. You compute the fixed point of, of this uh, computation. And um, how, how are we going to do this? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting on to the next slide. So there, there are actually three strategies we can use here. Uh, one, we can uh, ref count values. And you know we used to laugh at this, but it's coming back in the style, actually. Uh, another. You could uh, register the location of this value with the runtime and, um, and unregister it at some point when it goes out of scope. And another way we could find this value uh, would be what is called conservative root scanning. Um, and that's what uh, Guile has done for many, many years now. And the idea, I don't know, uh, if this is the first time you're hearing this, this is going to be wild. You know, like your brain is just going to go, because you, you take the stack, right, the machine stack. And you treat every word on it as if like, it's an integer, you know, but if it's an integer, which is within the range of the objects managed by the heap, then we consider this maybe a pointer, and then we keep those objects alive. So it's conservative in the sense that it, it doesn't compute the minimal set of live objects. It's an over-approximation of the live objects. It seems to work, though, um, historically. <laughs> it's not one of those things you have guarantees on. It's, it's very strange. Um, and Guile's very old, 30 years old, I think, today, I mean, or not not today, but like this year, I think, something like that. Um, we're, we're getting older also. <laughs> and, and, it, and since its very beginning, it's, it had a custom GC, uh, which it, we inherited from a previous imitation that Guile was based on, SCM. Um, and then in the mid-2000s, we added support for proper P threads. We had other things before. It was a kind of buggy time because threads and garbage collectors, it's a very tricky thing to get right. And if you just haphazardly add them together, without understanding what you're doing, you can make some bugs. When we switched to the, a third party collector called the Boehm Demers Weiser collector, I should have spelled it out here, a lot of these bugs went away, actually, um, because it, it's, it, it takes threads more into account. So it's better designed in some ways. And, and the, a nice thing when we switched to the Boehm collector is it scans not only stacks, but also static data segments, uh, p thread keys. It, it tries to find all the routes that it might possibly find. It, it grovels your system for special magic <laughs> integers. Um, and actually, with conservative collection, there are some advantages, and some real advantages. Uh, it is very nice to program with a conservative garbage collector. I work on web browsers. They all have, well, two of the three major ones have uh, precise roots, and it's a pain getting the handles right. And I've had bugs, you know, where you forget to register the location of a value, and everything blows up, but only sometimes. It depends on, you know, when the garbage collector runs. Uh, and it doesn't constrain the compiler because the compiler doesn't have to keep track. You don't have to uh, make the compiler tell the system about where the values are. Um, and uh, yeah, but on the on the other side, you might leak values. We don't know to what extent this is a thing. It is. It appears to be fine in practice. We, we actually don't have a lot of data there. With the advent of 64-bit uh, address spaces, I think it is less of a problem though. Um, another issue is. Uh, we can't move values. If any integer that we ever find during the whole trace of the heap might be a pointer to a value, we can, we can never compact the heap. And this is actually a real, um, uh, it's a real limitation for us in the sense that we can't use some of the newer, better, better performing garbage collecting algorithms. And as a, 
And as a technical constraint, it, it also constrains um, the, the the garbage collector from changing. We, it's very difficult to change to one of those garbage collector al algorithms now because we have so much user code, we have so much implementation, and it'll be hard. But what have I told you, right? Um, there is actually a better way. Because we thought we were at a local maximum. We couldn't get any better without getting worse for a while, right? Like we wouldn't, you know, reach that mountaintop without having to descend into the valley. But it turns out that you can have conservative roots and move objects and compact the heap. You can have conservative roots and do uh, fast bump pointer allocation, which we'll get to in a minute. And you, have, you can have conservative roots and eventually, possibly, add more precision to your to your scan. Um, and the thing that came along that allowed me to know this was something called IMIX. This is a uh, paper that was published in 2008 by Steve Blackburn and his group. Um, and it is a new, well, it, he characterizes in that paper a new class of fundamental GC algorithms. So you have like basically four, four things you can do when you're, when you're doing a GC. You can have what's called mark compact, meaning find the live objects and then slide them all to one side of the same space. So within the space that you found the objects in, you slide them all to one side. You have mark sweep, find all the objects, and then collect all the holes into, these are the holes that are two words long, these are the holes that are three words long, these are the holes, like that, into free lists is what it's called. You sweep to a free list, mark sweep. Evacuation, find all the live objects, and as you find them, you copy them somewhere else. So instead of sliding to part of one space, you get them out of the space entirely. And that's a semi-space, for example. Uh, that's a number of different um, Java uh, collection algorithms. And this other uh, new algorithm is mark region. Find all the holes and bump pointer allocate into them. Uh, you, as you allocate, you sort of sweep across the space and you uh, allocate in a bump pointer fashion into this hole and then to that hole and then to that hole instead of collecting free lists. And IMIX is uh, one of these new kind of collectors. This is a diagram from the paper, the 20, 2008 paper. IMIX is, organizes the heap into blocks and lines. Blocks are about 64 kilobytes in size, should be a multiple of the page size. And lines for IMIX are 128 bytes. Okay? And as you allocate, uh, here, here in this diagram we can see that um, there are some blocks that are all full. right? Full block, we don't have to do anything about it. There are some blocks that have some lines which were marked in the previous collection. Uh, and some lines that were not marked in the previous collection. The lines that are not marked, a set of contiguous lines is a hole. You can bump pointer allocate into the holes. Objects can be part of a line, uh, in which case maybe many objects fit in a line. They can span multiple lines, but they can't span blocks. Okay? Um, when you allocate, you, you bump pointer allocate, and, and you sweep through all the blocks in the system in the course of uh, that GC cycle. When you trace, you mark objects in the same way as a mark sweep collector. So there's a mark bit associated with every object, possibly in the object's header, possibly in the side table. But as you mark them, you also mark lines, the lines that they're on, using address math. Uh, typically, the way this is invented is all these um, uh, blocks are allocated as part of a line two megabyte uh, slabs, basically. And you can use address, address arithmetic to get to the a side table of uh, mark bytes for the line. And um, when you sweep, you do, uh, at the end of collection, there, it's an eager sweep over all of the um, line mark bytes, so the contiguous array of mark bytes for lines, to identify which blocks are full, which are completely empty, and which are recycled, uh, containing some old data, and those you would, you would bump pointer allocate into the holes. Right. Um, and the cool thing about it is that uh, IMIX does opportunistic evacuation, so it's not simply... Uh, leaving these objects in place. If it determines that your system needs to be defragmented, then it can choose some set of blocks to evacuate and choose some other set of blocks which are already empty to be evacuation targets. So it's still a one-pass algorithm over the heap, but instead of marking objects in place, it tries to put them into a, a, an empty block. And if you do this a couple times, you'll completely defragment the heap. Um, and, and it can fail because parallel markers and ordering and um, alignment issues, and, and that's okay. If, if the evacuation fails, you just mark in place. It's always okay to mark in place, and it's always okay to try to evacuate. evacuate evacuation may or may not succeed. So when I realized this, that you can mark in place or evacuate, this is something that is compatible with Guile, right? Uh, we can do bump pointer allocation. 
now instead of allocating from free lists, which would improve uh, throughput in Guile programs. We can compact the heap, which is, I mean, I, I, I know there are many Gix users here, and python-xyz.scm is one of the files you have. Yes. <laughs> I say no more. Uh, so I started a, a year on this, on this work in progress uh, WIP uh, GC implementation, hence where the, the name comes from. There are a couple of differences from IMIX. Uh, IMIX has these 128 byte lines, and if, if just one object on a line is left over, then the line is kept live, right? No, in the next collection, nobody will allocate, um, nobody will put an object in that line. It's, it's not a hole, basically. And, and for various reasons, I, I, it, I didn't make sense to me. So in, instead, in, in Whippet, we have 16 byte lines. So effectively, the line mark table is the object mark table. You only have one mark byte. It's a byte because of parallel markers. Um, and it, it's a bit more overhead in terms of space, but maybe it's a bit more parsimonious with memory. Well, we'll, we'll see how it works out. It's, it's an open question here. Um, and additionally, with these line mark bytes being uh, more fine-grained, it's a lose to do an eager sweep over the heap, so we do lazy sweeping. So as you allocate, you just sweep one block and then sweep another block and then sweep another block like that. Um, and the good thing about that is that it, it, it parallelizes things. Um, the bad thing is that you don't know how much data was alive at the previous collection right after your collection because you haven't swept yet. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, some comparisons with Whippet compared to the Bone Collector. Uh, and there are a number of different points here. So one of them is you can move values. If every, every edge in your graph is potentially conservative, uh, then you can't move anything because you could find a, an edge that keeps an object live uh, and doesn't allow moving late in, in, the, in the trace. But if you can partition your edges into a set that's conservative and a set that's not conservative, a set that's precise, you do the conservative ones first, and any object which isn't reached in that conservative trace is then movable. So what happens is you mark the stack first, and you mark in place. You don't evacuate. That is, is an implicit pin on every object that you mark. And, and then you go and you mark the heap. And if you find another object there, you can evacuate in, at that point. Um, and then in Whippet, if we see that the heap is fragmented, we can, we can uh, turn evacuation on. And if we, don't, if we see the heap is not fragmented, we can always mark in place and not incur the, the overhead of copying. Um, there is also explicit pinning for uh, various reasons. Uh, we can shrink the heap, um, which is nice. Because these um, blocks are multiples of the OS page size, they're easy to return to the OS whenever we find that a block is empty. And you can just mark it as being empty, and um, mAdvise, Mav don't need it. And if you ever need it again, you can pull it right back in. It's, it's zeroed by the OS. Um, and additionally, there's a possibility to uh, use uh, adaptive uh, heap sizing uh, techniques, such as uh, the one that I link here. It's an online uh, algorithm that depends on how, what's your current cost of GC and how fast are you allocating. So a process which sort of stops and goes quiet, gets its memory slowly reduced uh, to the minimum. Uh, you can fit more on a system. And we can also do um, uh, generational collection if we want to, using the sticky mark byte algorithm, which I, I link to here. It's described more in, uh, in that post. For some programs, it doesn't make a difference because some data isn't very generation friendly. This is the case of the first uh, MTGC bench pair over there where the the first bar is, is whip it without generational collection, and the second is with. But in some cases, it's very effective. Like in, the, in this, I'm making a bunch of uh, quad trees, and it, it pretty much doubles the throughput of, of, the, of the system. Uh, additionally, uh, with whip it, we scale a lot better for multiple allocator threads. Uh, in BDW, have uh, these size segregated free lists, the free list of size 2, 3, 4, and, and that, that sort of thing. And, and you need to lock the heap to sweep and find more and, and fill those free lists. In Whippet, uh, you use uncontended um, atomic ops to uh, obtain the next block, just basically incrementing a counter, because the blocks are contiguous in these two megabyte slabs. And, um, and, and you sweep in, without contention. So these are two graphs showing the time it takes uh, as problem size increases and number of mutator threads increases. So at each step, I'm, I'm I'm adding on an additional mutator, an additional thread, uh, doing the same amount of work. So at 
with two mutator threads, the heap is twice as big as it was with one. And with eight, it's eight times as big as it, as it was with one. So we do expect to see some increase. What we see is that uh, BDW um, takes uh, more time. Uh, ultimately, like it's at nine seconds with an eight thread uh, mutator, whereas we're only at three and a half uh, with, with Whippet. It scales much better when, when you're adding allocators. And this is with a single marker thread. So we expect to see some uh, in increase uh, as the problem size gets larger. Uh, this is, uh, what, do they, what do you call that? It's like when you make a quilt, apparently you're supposed to put a part in it that's incorrect because you don't want to show too much pride in the face of God, right? It's like a touch of the hand sort of thing. This is my humility slide uh, showing Whippet being slower than BDWGC on this one machine. I have no idea what's going on with this because I remeasured it on my other machine and it looks much better. But <laughs> it does point that like, as you add on marker threads, things, things improve, although I don't understand the relative uh, BDW Whippet thing right there. So I, that's a question. The, so with, with the heap, with, a, with twice as much memory as the problem takes, as we add markers, things get uh, better for both uh, BDW and Whippet, but uh, a little bit better for Whippet. Um, right, so ephemerons. This is weak maps, like you have in JavaScript, where you have like keys associated with value. But what if value references key? Like, can you have a circular reference? Like, could the could the weak reference to the, does it leak memory? I don't know. The, you, you people have heard about ephemerons, I would imagine. Uh, you cannot do them in the Bohm collector. It's impossible, right? Uh, I've tried a lot and thought about this, but with Whippet we have them. You really need deep GC integration to, to implement ephemerons. Um, right, and precision. So with BDW, you're always stack conservative. You're always scanning the heap, uh, the stack for mm, smelly pointers, right? Or, or smelly integers, like integers that could point to the heap. Um, and it's often configured in such a way that every edge on the heap also is, uh, is conservative. And with Whippet, we can configure it in a number of different ways. And probably where we're heading in in the mid-near term is this uh, conservative scan of the C stack, a uh, precise scan of the scheme stack, um, and a precise scan of the heap. Um, so we will be able to get the advantages of motion compaction and all that. Um, but we could move to a, a fully precise uh, stack as well. Um, and potentially things could get better. BDWGC is terrible to hack on. I just counted. It's like 15 or 16% uh, CP processor directives. You can imagine it's probably 90% of the code is covered by if defs. It's really, really hard. Right, so uh, some, some more words about how it is that we are, we are, the royal we, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, working on getting uh, Whippet implemented in such a way that it could land in Guile uh, and not break the world, because uh, uh, I'm going to make a confession. I don't maintain software. <laughs> I develop software. <laughs> and then I throw it over the wall and I forget about it. So if I'm, if I'm going to get bugs in the garbage collector, I, that's not, I'm, I better not start because, you know, I'm not going to fix them. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, the, the repository is here. Um, it is designed to be an embed only library, it's kind of like an include style library, but you, can, you, you actually do separate compilation. But it's something that you include in your source tree because it needs to be specialized with respect to the uh, program that's using it. In the case of Guile, Guile will tell Whippet uh, how to put a forwarding pointer in, in an object, for example, uh, how to do a precise trace of the heap. Um, and then we also uh, specify Whippet uh, with respect to the domain. So what should we scan conservatively? What should we scan precisely? That sort of thing. Um, there is, um, we use LTO, and it appears to remove uh, the overhead of a separate compilation, uh, link time optimization. Um, I'm actually suspecting LTO for that, that other graph that I, that I showed you. But um, So we, we actually managed to get performance and abstraction at the same time uh, by being inspired by MMTK. MMTK is a memory management toolkit. It's fantastic. Um, it's a library of garbage collectors and technique and experience and, and, and knowledge, uh, currently written in Rust, uh, formerly part of the Jikes research uh, JVM, um, but now retargeting to OpenJDK and V8 and a number of other systems. We could actually slot this into Guile um, if, if we wanted to at some point. Um, but we have enough information exposed in the API to allow a JIT to use that um, exposed information and generate 
uh, machine code for the fast path for allocation, for example. Um, and, and by having like a real abstract barrier between the two sides, uh, we allow uh, both sides to evolve at, the, at their own pace. Um, right. and, and when we think about migrating Guile to Whippet, which is kind of where I want to go here, um, I know in the talk description it, it, it kind of oversold the, the item, right? It's like, now we have a new production garbage collector in Guile. It's not there yet. Right? <laughs> so this abstract API can be implemented by the current garbage collector being used by Guile, by the BOEM collector, by the BDW collector. And, and so that's going to be the first step, is to switch uh, Guile over to use the new API, but still use the old collector implementation. And then we can look at switching to whip it, but that wouldn't require any code changes, ideally, in, in Guile. Um, the, the, I mean, so you have the, the whip it API, but then you have the whip it garbage implementation uh, algorithm uh, that we were talking about. There are a lot of variants uh, on the algorithm, incidentally, that you can, you, these are different ways you can configure whip it. Um, on two different tests. One, there's an MTGC bench. One, there's, there's quads here. And, and going across, we, we can first see uh, serial whip it. One marker, um, one marking thread. It's not, it's not going to do parallel marking. That's the first uh, light blue bar on both of those sides. And then we have parallel whip it. Four markers, in, in this case, is what I was measuring. Um, it improves things in some cases, it, a little bit in other cases. Minor improvements. Generational whip it. Uh, collect more recently allocated objects more frequently than older objects. Parallel generational whip it, four markers and generational. Um, and then after that, there's four more bars, which are the same thing, but collecting stack roots conservatively. Uh, the previous one is a precise scan of the stack, uh, the previous uh, four bars. And then the next four bars are a uh, conservative scan. And as you'll note, it actually performs better. And there are two reasons for this. Um, one, conservative scanning can actually reduce the lifetime of objects. Um, if the compiler determines that an object isn't needed at, at any given point, it can reuse its register or stack slot or, or what have you, uh, whereas you have to wait for the unregister part of a registration, deregistration API uh, if you're using precise roots. And the other thing is that uh, when using this API from C, I don't actually have uh, cooperation from the compiler where it's going to write out a table of where all the values are. I have to explicitly say, and now remember this one. Okay, now forget it. And now remember this one, and now forget it. And that's overhead, right? And by doing a conservative scan, I remove that overhead. Um, and then the final two bars, I didn't include generational because it doesn't really make sense in, in this context, is a fully heap conservative um, uh, scan. We increase a lot on this MTGC bench benchmark because there's, it allocates a very big array, and I don't have the equivalent of uh, pointless allocation that, that the BDW API gives you. So we end up tracing all the elements of that really big array, which gives a big spike over there. Uh, in the case of quads, we never have large objects. We're al always tracing everything anyway, and it doesn't really matter. Um, but heap conservative does slow you down relative to just having stack conservative. Uh, right. And then as a project, it's written in C, which I know is a sin. Um, but, you know, Guile has this sort of... Uh, odd place in the supply chain of geeks, and it's useful to uh, depend on a more minimal set of things rather than using Rust, for example. But it's a relatively modern C, you know, uses stid atomic, it uses things in a way that are const expert-ish, um, in a way that you know that the, compile, the compiler is going to reduce them down. Uh, it avoids void pointers completely, using instead uh, structs containing a single member, which gets boiled away by the compiler as well. Uh, which can't be cast to each other. You need explicit conversions. That way you won't confuse a conservative reference with a precise reference and things like that. And, and we don't actually have any API, con ABI or API concern at all because it's an embed-only library. Uh, if, if something breaks, don't update it. Um, uh, la, 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 la. And it, it does have a, a bit of an abstraction for how do you find conservative roots on whatever your platform is. It's, it's not so bad, it turns out. Um, so if we think about when it is that this might reach Guile, um, then we are, it, it's, it's when we can, right, you know, in the end. Um, this is a, kind of a side project for me. I have other side projects, children, you know. So, <laughs> so I, I, I <laughs> we can't really give a, can't really give a ETA here, but um, I would mention that there are a few things to do, uh, and, and what we might end up with is that uh, we could get a new release series for Guile, which is, I think is what would be required for this. Um, maybe starting in six months or so, uh, just switching over to the API and staying with the Boehm collector. 
And maybe we could uh, re release a new stable version in another six months or realistically a little bit more. Um, but we'd have to do a few things for there. Whippet is done mostly with the exception of actually growing and shrinking the heap, um, Im implementing finalizers, um, and having an a API for checking in with Whippet, uh, checking in with the GC uh, as to when a mutator should stop. Because that's one other thing that the BDW collector does is it uses uh, signals to stop all the threads, whereas Whippet uh, relies on periodic safe points. There are trade-offs. Um, in Guile, we would have to switch over to these safe points. I think it's possible. And, uh, and I think we would start with a heap conservative Whippet, uh, just because it's the same thing that we do in, in, um, w with the BDW collector. And then we'd move over to a precise scan of the heap. Um, when we get to a precise scan of the heap, uh, we have to implement a few things on the Guile side. Um, there are some hazards about uh, current uses of the API. Uh, in particular, if a, a third-party user ever allocates an object and then stuffs something in it that Guile doesn't know about, is it an integer or is it a pointer to the heap? Uh, and there are a couple of places that people can do that that are um, unclear. And we can't allow this if we want uh, to trace the heap precisely and move objects. So this might require some uh, small API changes and API breaks, because it's a new series, uh, around this area. Uh, it might be actually time to remove smobs entirely, possibly. Um, yeah, so that's what's actually pushing us to a, to a new major release. Um, so in summary, um, Whippet is a new GC. It's a, Replacement for BDWGC, it has the potential to reach a new uh, local maximum, uh, better than BDW, um, and I think we can get into GAL 3.2. And I would like to thank particularly the MMTK people for inspiration and uh, discussions, because um, it's been really helpful uh, to be able to properly learn about garbage collection over the last uh, year or so. I'll leave you with one slide. Um, when you evaluate a GC, you need to do so with a space-time diagram um, because uh, GC is a function, it's a trade-off between space and time. So on the x-axis, you should have uh, your heap size as a function of what is the minimum heap size. Here I measured uh, some algorithms at 1.3x, 1.5x, 1.75x, 2, 2.5, 3, 4, 5, and 6, or just a 5. And on the, on the y-axis, you should have whatever you're measuring, being, be it like instructions retired or you know, wall clock time or memory or something like that because you know, the, the heap size is, is one of the and the response to heap size is one of the fundamental uh, trade-offs in GC. Here we show um, that actually we show the BDW collector, a semi-space collector, which is also implemented behind the Whippet API, uh, and the Whippet uh, algorithm. Serial, uh, one marker, uh, one, one mutator on this benchmark. And we see performance as we, as we change heap size. Uh, Whippet is the only one that gets to 1.3x. Um, this is a analytical calculation of how big the heap should be. Uh, it's not measured as to how, how small I can get anything to run, but it's like what I think the heap should take. Um, so it, it might not precisely be 1.3, it might be 1, or you know, it, it's, a, it's a number in that range. It can get to the smallest. It takes a bit of effort to do so. As, as you become more parsimonious with your heap, you end up tracing it more. Um, so the curve goes up on that side, but it's the only one that actually gets that x-axis point of view. Um, and then it, it quickly uh, passes, uh, and you want these, these numbers to be low. Right? That's what you want. Right? It quickly passes BDWGC. There's only one point where it takes more uh, time than BDWGC, and, uh, and that's concerning. I need to, need to fix that one. Then we see the green line is the semi-space collector. Semi-space, as you add memory, it gets easier and easier and easier, right? Because it, it depends only on the size of the live data, whereas uh, Whippet and uh, BDW need to sweep the heap. So as you add uh, memory, it, it sort of plateaus. It, it doesn't keep on going down. I don't know why it goes up at the end. This is my other little touch of the hand. Like, I don't know. I, I, what's, this is, that looks like a bug to me. Um, so that, that's something to fix. Anyway, there's Whippet. Uh, thank you for enduring this um, blathering. And uh, good luck, everybody, uh, in about 18 months when this starts rolling out to geeks. <laughs> Just shows, because I won't be around. <laughs> good. So I'll take any questions. Um, even, yeah. Even dumb questions. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, it seems like the 
seems to me like uh, conservative tax planning is incompatible with uh, address sanitizer uh, from uh, LLVM or GCC. So how do you debug um, like address bug with the GCC? Oh, how, uh, so the question is, uh, conservative stack scanning seems to be incompatible with a address sanitizer from LVM GCC. I, I'm going to make a confession here. I'm a professional C++ de developer, and I work on web browsers. I don't know what address sanitizer does. <laughs> you know, I know it gives me bugs sometimes and tells me things I have to fix, but I, I, I don't know what's going on there, and I'm, I should know. You know can, you, can you tell us, like, why is it incompatible? Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, it tells you you're in the red zone or you're in something uh, okay. not work. So if you scan the world stack, um, mm -hmm. only part of it is actually yeah. uh, valid. So, so the, the answer was that it only um, it, 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 it signals warnings if you ever access uh, a value after it's been freed. Is that right? Or uh, for example, uh, you, you are in a function and you mm -hmm. access something that wasn't. Uh, okay. Well, I, I think it's actually not a problem because uh, we're not. We don't trigger the malloc free detection at all. It's a complete third party allocator. It's as if you mmap the page and we're just reading values from that page. And so it, it doesn't trigger the, the particular logic there, which also means you have no tool support, right? You're, it's Wild West and, you know, with the bugs that may go with it. So, uh, uh, yeah, I guess that's the answer there. Yes, other question. Well, this will affect Geeks users in the sense that, one, I hope that um, when you rebuild the system, uh, Geeks launches multiple threads to compile things. And as we see, there's contention in BDWGC. It doesn't actually scale very well as you add threads if you have an allocation-heavy workload. And so I think that when uh, Guile incorporates Whippet, um, Geeks with multiple threads should scale better. In addition, um, we will be able to have better tooling for how um, understanding the heap and, and heap usage, and ideally uh, be able to place ourselves better on the kind of um, space-time trade-off. Um, if, if you need more throughput, give it a bigger heap. Also, let it shrink. Um, and that can affect also longer-running demons like the shepherd and things like that. So it should, should yield a more robust system. Yes? They're actually 64 kilobyte blocks. And so I, I think I chose like the least common multiple or whatever. Um, it, it's, it's configurable, um, but I, I think the default size is such that they are large enough for any common architecture. Uh, the, the question was about page size. Is 16 kilobytes big enough for blocks? But it's actually 64 kilobytes. So. Yes? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. I didn't mention this. So uh, um, this is a stop the world collector. It's not a concurrent collector, with the exception of um, threads mark their own stacks while other threads are running. So there's a little bit of concurrency there. Uh, we may add concurrent marking at some point, um, but you need um, write barriers uh, for that to work. And so that would be something to add once generational collection is working, because you've proven that you have all the write barriers in the right place. Then write barriers is just like a little piece of code that runs when, whenever you update a value, in, in a, whenever you store a pointer. And uh, if you, write barriers can be used to indicate pointers from old objects to new objects, helping you do generational collection. They can also be used to uh, mark an object as being allocated uh, after the concurrent marker has already marked it in that cycle. I, I, I'm not explaining myself very well. But basically you need uh, write barriers to be able to have um, to be able to minimize the stop the world component of the mark phase. If, does that answer the question? Yeah. Okay. Yes? Uh, how would this simplify or complicate the Giles um, Web Assembly? Oh, yeah, it's a good question. So there's a project to compile uh, Giles Web Assembly. Uh, I think initially this will probably start by um, having a Giles library produce Web Assembly that has its own runtime. And this could grow to a uh, whole program standalone compiler in which 
Uh, Guile has a library. It takes your Guile program and spits out a uh, native binary. And in that case, uh, that native binary would include Whippet uh, embedded in it. Instead of having that native binary then link to the BDW collector. Um, so the goal would be to produce one binary that it's all finished. Is that it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.